Despite being a children's show, Miraculous Ladybug has never really seemed to shy away from serious subjects that one may deem to be, well, morally ambiguous when it comes to deeming whether or not something's inappropriate to show to younger audiences unsupervised. Whether this be in the form of parental abuse, apocalyptic situations, or even whether or not artificial sentient beings deserve human rights and autonomy. Wait, what? There's nothing monstrous about her. Whoever possesses this controls the Senti Monster. She couldn't help but follow orders. Senti Monster, you're free now. I won't give you orders, but I ask you, help us grab my Yura's Miraculous. Okay, okay. So that last point may or may not have been an exaggeration, but I'm not the only one who thought what Mayora did to Senti Monster Ladybug was messed up, right? She quite literally just Thanos snapped her the moment she stepped out of line and gained free will. They can't just essentially kill a character on screen like that and act like it never happened, could they? Jokes aside, the introduction to Mayora and Amukization has added loads to the lore and world building of Miraculous Ladybug. It may not seem like it, but the existence of Senti Monsters opens up so many more horrifying possibilities for the show to cover. The most horrifying being the topic of today's video, which actually heavily relates to the late Senti Monster Ladybug that I mentioned earlier in this video. I'm just gonna call her Senti Bug for short, because saying Senti Monster Ladybug over and over again is going to be a mouthful of words for a mouthful of marbles. But while I open today's video talking about Senti Bug, we're actually going to be talking about another hero gone artificial. In this case, I'm talking about the potential of a Senti Monster Cat Noir, or more accurately, a Senti Monster Adrian Agrest, who just so coincidentally happened to become Cat Noir, unbeknownst to everyone, including himself. Admittedly, the whole Adrian is a Senti Monster theory isn't one that's new, nor is this the first time that someone has covered it in a video. That said, I did want to give my take on this popular theory, and state the reasons why I think it could be a very real possibility, as well as just in general being a bold way to take the story, if they ever choose to do so. So it's time for us to ask the question, is our favorite Parisian feline a Mew or a Mew 2? An original or a fake? Subtle nerdy cat pun out of the way, let's get into the supporting evidence, shall we? First off, for those of you unfamiliar with Miraculous Ladybug who are watching this video, there are some lore-related terms that I'm going to be using here with the assumption that you need no explanation on them. If you haven't seen it yet and you don't know what a Kwame is, or just want to know the comprehensive history on them, I do have a video that I made on Kwame lore that I'll be linking in the info card. I heavily recommend before watching this video that you at the very least familiarize yourself with the basic lore of the show. Trust me, it'll be so much easier to follow along if you do. If you don't feel like watching another video to explain it, all you really need to know is that Kwame are the animal-themed characters that give superheroes in the show their powers by powering their magic jewelry that they wear and enabling them to transform. Plague embodies the power of destruction, whereas Tiki embodies the power of creation. Pretty neat stuff, and it's much more than that on surface level. Again, I recommend watching the video where I delve more into that. But for the sake of not wanting to bore people to death and getting to the point, that's the basics of what you need to know. Like Plague and Tiki, other Kwame embody different abilities based on an abstract idea or a value. Today, the Kwame that we're going to be focusing on is Dusu, the peacock Kwame of emotion. We'll also be focusing on his holder, Natalie, who after transforming becomes Mayora, Hawkmoth's partner in crime. Dusu embodies the power of emotion and grants his user with the ability to create senti monsters through the usage of emotional attachment and energy regarding the sentimentality of an item. Senti monsters are essentially magical embodiments of emotions, but they're also actual living beings that are capable of complex thought and sapience. The holder of the Peacock Miraculous can control the senti monster through possession of the item in which they're tied to and can even destroy them with a simple hand movement if they so wish. The only stipulation is that they cannot control it if they don't have the item that it was created from. However, they can always destroy it regardless of the item possession as a failsafe. Amukization also isn't a time-limited ability as we can see through senti monsters such as Feast. They can literally lay dormant and exist for centuries after their conception as long as they aren't destroyed. It's sort of unclear whether or not they all enter a dormant state, or whether they just don't age and are immortal, especially since this is a somewhat newer concept that was really only introduced and fleshed out towards the tail end of Season 3. 
But for the sake of the argument here, whether or not a senti monster can age and change form isn't incredibly relevant since senti Adrian would have been made any time between from when Emily first got her miraculous and when she first got sick. So aging isn't really important when trying to prove or disprove this theory in terms of the canon timeline. Now, the theory that Adrian is a senti monster has quite a few supporting arguments in its favor. I'll admit that some evidence is stronger than the others, but I'm still going to present all of it anyways. The first piece of evidence actually comes in the main conflict of the series, Adrian's mom, Emily Agrest's disappearance. We know that Emily is either dead or in a coma, and her body is being preserved in a life pod beneath Agrest Manor, even if her source of affliction is unknown. What we do know is that she got very sick and had dizzy spells prior to her disappearance. So, how is Emily tied to senti monsters and the peacock miraculous? I'm sure most of you already know this, but it's all but confirmed at this point that Emily was the holder of the peacock miraculous prior to Natalie. This is supported by the fact that we know the miraculous was corrupted or broken prior to its current usage, and that it caused Natalie to fall ill. It was also for that reason that Gabriel refused to use it or even allow her to use it at the very start of the series. He knew it was dangerous, and it's why he had a very negative reaction to her first time transforming. Adrian even points out that Natalie's sickness is suspiciously similar to that of his mother's and it's giving him deja vu. My mom used to have dizzy spells, just like Natalie. My father said those weren't serious either. This pretty much confirms that Emily was the Peacock Miraculous holder before her, and that's what drove her to either fall into a coma or die. Again, it really isn't clear what exactly her status is. And while this is incredibly obvious, what isn't obvious is the reason why the Peacock Miraculous was broken in the first place. Now, while it is incredibly possible that it was broken prior to Gabriel and Emily obtaining them, I think it's just as likely that it broke from misuse. There's a few in-show occurrences to support this. We know that using too many Miraculous at once can result in the user fainting, such as how it was shown in the episode Kwame Buster when Mara Nut transformed into Multi-Mouse while using all of the Miraculous. She was fine after the fact, but it still stands to reason that the misuse of the Miraculous overwhelmed her to the point of near fainting. While she wasn't using a corrupted Miraculous, the fact that being exposed to too much Miraculous power having a similar effect is very suspicious. And in the episode Ladybug, Natalie falls more ill than she ever has before for creating Sentibug. We haven't seen things with her to this magnitude before in terms of her creating Senti monsters, and I think it's because she was misusing the Miraculous by creating a Senti monster that, one, had free will, and two, very closely resembled a human and a pre-existing human at that. Unlike all of the other monsters made in the past who range from a blob with no eyes to literal insect. While it's possible that it's just that she's been using the Peacock Miraculous too often recently and that the effects are now just getting to her, I don't think it would be fair to rule out the possibility of her misusing the Miraculous being the reason for her collapse and overall negative reaction to her powers. Especially when directly before the scene with her falling ill, Ladybug mentions the consequences of misusing the power of a Miraculous. It seemed like the longer Sentibug was alive, the more Mayora was drained. And the fact that Sentibug existed and was a perfect copy of Ladybug just further proves that it's possible to make a copy of somebody. I guess even your miraculous Ladybugs can't bring our baguette back. Peacock's superpower can be so cruel when wrongly used, even more than the butterfly's one. I think the logical conclusion that we can reach here is that Emily was the one who damaged the Peacock Miraculous, albeit unintentionally. As to how, I have a far less concrete theory that isn't as well supported, but there's two possibilities that I came up with. One, the real Adrian died somehow, maybe in an accident or something. And two, Gabriel and Emily for some reason couldn't have children, and so Adrian was made from the Miraculous. The reason in both cases for the Miraculous breaking is the irresponsible usage of the powers given. The Peacock Miraculous is meant to temporarily create monsters to aid you in battles or tasks, not to create humans and play God. I'm not really sure which of these is more possible, since, again, there isn't really much supporting evidence for one over the other. If anything, I think it's more likely for something to have happened to the first Adrian before Senti Adrian, since Gabriel is so overprotective of him and doesn't allow him to go literally anywhere outside of a grass mansion unless Adrian begs him to. And in terms of where the amok is, we actually have a very likely candidate. I think the most likely spot for it is to be in one of the Graham Devanelli family rings. Gabriel keeps one on Emily's finger and one on himself. When Felix steals his, he takes Emily's and wears it in her place. If a senti monster could only be created by using an item with sentimental value, I do think that the wedding ring would be the absolute perfect target, especially when creating a senti monster that is literally meant to be the child between a married couple. That also brings up some horrifying possibilities, 
considering if that were the case, either Gabriel or Felix would have the amok that was used to create Adrian. And, you know, that means that they could potentially control him. And that doesn't sit well with me for various reasons. Neither of those characters, I think, would react very well to knowing that they basically can make Adrian do whatever they want, at least for a little while. Granted, I trust Felix much more than I do Gabriel, but I really don't trust either of them to be entirely and completely responsible with that information and ability. Although this theory isn't on why Senti Adrian was made, but rather a video on if a Senti Adrian is possible, which, as we saw from the episode Ladybug, we know that it 100% is. Let's get into more supporting evidence that points us in the direction of Adrian being a Senti monster rather than an ordinary human. For our next bit of evidence, we're going to go back to examining Gabriel's words and actions. Now, I've made a video on this before a few months ago on how Gabriel Agrest is abusive. There's no denying that, and there's no way around it. I'll link my video in the info card where I go into more detail on that, but there's really no denying that he's a horrible father. Gabriel consistently gaslights, ignores, and neglects his son. He's also incredibly inconsistent throughout the series on whether or not he actually cares for Adrian, since in one episode he will do whatever he can to keep him out of harm's way, when in the next, he'll literally put him as the main target of an Akuma. And at one point, he even Akumatizes himself and makes him the target. So either Gabriel is inconsistently written, or he has conflicted feelings on his son. There's a line in the episode Ladybug where he makes fun of Ladybug and Cat Noir for getting sentimental about a senti monster after they kill Sentibug, which is either a horrible pun, masterful foreshadowing, or both. Getting sentimental on a senti monster? You're the real monster! Oh, that. You'll find out very soon. Gabriel's inconsistency for caring about his son may or may not be due to conflicted feelings. If Emily effectively died bringing Adrian back in the form of a senti monster, yeah, I could see how there would be some resentment there. Of course, it isn't justifiable since Adrian is still a child, but it would help you know, to make Gabriel look a little bit more sympathetic and tragic, since right now he really only looks like a self-centered jerk. There's a few other things that Gabriel says that's a little concerning and eyebrow-raising, and it comes in the form of him talking about Adrian, as well as Adrian's actions. In the episode Simon Says, Gabriel is talking to Ladybug about Adrian and goes on to claim that his son is perfect. Isn't he flawless? What? Uh, what? Flaw what? Adrian, my son, is the image of perfection, don't you think? Now, while this could be seen as a father looking at their child through rose-tinted glasses, it could also be Gabriel stating this in a very literal sense. He isn't exactly someone who jokes around, and he seems to be a very critical man in general. If Adrian were created artificially, then, yeah, he could have been created to be perfect, at least from Gabriel's perspective. And he isn't really wrong to state this. If he was created artificially, it's implied that he could have created him to be perfect and without flaw, at least from his perspective. And perhaps he was, until he continued to gain his own free will and experience things that changed him. Now, this of course isn't accounting for the fact that Adrian does have very serious flaws, but they're all flaws that he hardly ever allows Gabriel to see. Mostly out of rightful fear, but also because Gabriel doesn't allow for failure. Nor is he around Adrian enough to see his imperfections. It doesn't really help that Adrian excels at basically everything. That's one of his characteristics. It's also a belief held among his classmates and fans who see him as this pristine rich boy model who can do absolutely no wrong. Obviously, if you're looking at it from our lens as the audience, we can see that he's impulsive and doesn't communicate well. But really, no one else sees that. Especially when he masks it so well when he's Adrian and not Cat Noir. But he is also able to mask it so well simply because he's very good at a lot of things, and it's hard to see him as flawed when he's surpassing everybody in literally everything. Either he's a Mary Stew or he's just suspiciously massively talented at everything. He plays multiple instruments, is canonically multilingual, speaking at least three languages fluently, is top of his class in fencing, and in general excels at literally anything he tries on the first try. Even when he's Cat Noir for the first time, he's far more comfortable than Ladybug is. And yes, I do think that Ladybug's insecurity had a role to play in that, but it still plays into the whole automatically gifted point I'm playing on here. So again, either he's written intentionally to be a Mary Stew on surface level, which is very possible because of his character arc, an overall trope, or him being a senti monster could explain why he's so good at literally everything but emotions. If he wasn't an impulsive cat noir who let emotions rule his actions, he likely wouldn't fail as often as he does. Sorry, Kitty, but you should have known. I'm nowhere near as perfect as her. I love you just the way you are, milady. 
Now, there's a few other things that also support the whole Senti Adrian theory, but again, these are a tiny bit more flimsy. In the context of them being just neat coincidences or actual supporting evidence. So this is a fact that's mentioned in the episode Reflect Doll, where Adrian and Marinette swap places, but when Lady Noir uses Cataclysm on the Senti monster, instead of being destroyed, it goes berserk. As if the Cataclysm was like a bee sting on a bull. It riled it up without actually wounding it. <laughs> so we know that Cataclysm from the Black Cat Miraculous is unable to destroy magic from the Peacock Miraculous, which is an interesting fact. And it's interesting because, if you recall, Adrian has been Cataclysmed before. Back in the episode Miracular, Sabrina becomes Miracular and is able to steal the abilities of any Miraculous holder. She's able to steal Cat Noir's Cataclysm ability, and she hits him square in the ribs more than once. Instead of dying or getting temporarily killed, he simply keels over in pain. Cataclysm! Black Closet! So, that's what it feels like to get cataclysmed. Now, it could just be it's because he's Cat Noir and he's immune to Cataclysm. Or, simply put, the super suit that comes with his transformation makes him immune, similar to how a snake is immune to its own venom. But it could also be that Reflect Doll is unaffected and only injured by the Cataclysm because he's a senti monster. It's ambiguous enough information that it could really mean nothing or be a huge clue depending on the context. But if you recall, he did Cataclysm and kill both Ladybug and Hawk Moth when he was Cat Blanc while they were transformed. And he was also immune to his cataclysm in that instance as well, since he was literally the only person left alive in Paris. So it's very possible that either he's immune because he's Cat Noir, or he's immune because he's a senti monster. Because he could cataclysm them successfully, even with the power of their transformations protecting them, so it wasn't just simply the suit. Either explanation seems just as likely at this point. The last and final piece of supporting evidence is sort of meme but I thought it would be fun to include anyway. Adrian is allergic to feathers. This has been brought up multiple times in the series and is a running gag because it adds to the further hilarity of the Love Square shenanigans. What else has feathers? Birds. What's a type of bird? A peacock. What's the miraculous of the user who creates senti monsters? The peacock miraculous. Coincidence? I think not. But real talk, do I think that this is irrefutable evidence that Adrian is a senti monster? No. Do I think it would be hilarious if he turns out to be one and he's allergic to feathers? Oh, absolutely. There's a level of irony that I think that couldn't be anything but accidental. Overall, do I think that this theory has a possibility of being true? I think it's possible, yeah. I mean, we are dealing with dead parents and an on-screen death. I think at this point, anything is possible. But just because it's possible, do I think that it will happen and that it's true? Not necessarily. While this is a cool theory for fanfiction and in general just fun to play around with conceptually, I don't think that Adrian is actually a senti monster canonically. I certainly think that there is enough evidence for it to go either way, but I don't believe that's the way that the team will choose to go narratively. I think that it would raise too many moral issues for one, and two, would make things much too complicated for the type of show that this is. And when discussing things in terms of theories with this show in particular, I do think that's important to keep in mind. Not saying that I think children couldn't understand it, but it does seem a little bit too needlessly complicated for a child's first introduction to a semi-serialized cartoon. But I am interested in hearing your thoughts. What do you think about the Senti Monster theory? Are you like me and you think it's cool but unrealistic? Or are you a firm believer that Adrian is a Senti Monster and the proof is staring us in the face? let me know in the comments down below. And if you want to see more analysis and theory videos like this in the future, why not subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified of when I upload. Special thank you to my top tier patrons, Ambrose Rothwood, Rosie Knightley, Jeffy Games, Brandon Nunes, The Lovely Ghosty, Sodden Suzuki, Lee Taylor, and Zachary Ansley. Because of people like them, I can continue to make content like this. And I hope to see you all in the next video. Have an amazing day, guys.